I'll be down in a minute. Oh, God. <laughs> People mean well. They do. But to be honest, they're doing my head in. The lot of them. I mean, obviously, our Kathy's going to be upset. It's only natural. Frank was a dad. But who starts talking about insurance policies at a funeral? This flaming sister, Jackie, that's who. Or Jackal, as I like to call her. Not to her face, obviously. <laughs> I remember when she buried her husband, Colin. I mean, I ask you, what kind of a trollop wears false eyelashes to her husband's funeral? Bloody things were that long, they stuck to the end of her fairy focals. They were like, like a couple of spiders trying to escape. <laughs> and they weren't the only ones. We went back to hers afterwards, for to tea, paid our respects. And then, <laughs> then Frank was in my ear, come on, let's shoot off. Of course, what he meant was, let's get to the pub before closing time. But then... He never was a sentimental type. I give it to you straight, he'd say. Like there was a virtue in telling people stuff they didn't want to hear. I, I suppose some people might have thought it, it was a bit cruel. It's nice to have an occasion to dress up, though. I'm not Catholic or anything, but here's a confession. I have thought about it over the years what I'd wear, what music I'd play, what I'd say about him. <laughs> not, not that I wished him gone or anything. He, he was my husband. It's just, well, something you think about. <laughs> we played my guy in the end. Kathy wanted everybody hurts, but... Two minutes of that and I'd have been in the coffin with him. <laughs> no. My guy reminded me of when me and Frank met. I was 18. I was, I was working in a shoe shop. Came in with his mates, you know, a bit leery, but with a twinkle. I can see him now wearing his Sunday suit. His hair all brill creamed with his quiff. Anyway, asked me if I fancied going dancing, and that was that. I met his mum and dad. He met mine. And it was 1966, and we'd been going out for two years when he said, Jeannie, if England win the World Cup, I'll marry you. Later he joked that the bloody Germans had ruined his life. What about mine, I'd say? Not the proposal I dreamt of. And I should have told him to sod off. But it was nice to be asked. Oh, God. Make your ears hurt after a bit, don't they? <sighs> Ooh. I wore them because Frank bought them for me on Christmas. Well, I say bought them. He gave me the money and told me to get something nice. Sensible, really. Although I don't suppose he cared whether it was a hoover or a handbag. I saw these in a pawnbroker's. They just caught my eye. That's where this came from. <laughs> Belonged to my nan. Wasn't the one she got married with, though. That that was in and out the pawn shop like a fiddler's elbow. <laughs> well, it was either that or no tea on the table. Until one time, she couldn't afford to buy it back. And she lost it. Unredeemed pledge, they called it. My granddad at the roof, despite never having to go to bed on an empty belly. I suppose... No one really knows what goes on inside other people's marriages, do they? No. 
Anyway, she bought this ring when things got a bit easier. It's only nine carat, but still. I'm not sure what people normally do, do they? They take it off. I suppose I should. Well. Oh. Oh. Frank. <laughs> oh. Frank, you daft bugger. Oh. Right, Jean, come on. <laughs> this won't do. 